speak to you in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This past Tuesday, LeBron James surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the all-time leading scorer in the NBA. And there was a there was a ceremony, and and everybody was was very happy. And I only know about this because I heard it on the radio. I did not see the game, and and there is there is no doubt that LeBron James is an amazing basketball player. But for me, the greatest basketball player of all time is Michael Jordan. And that's because every year of high school, save for the time that he played for the White Sox farm team, Michael Jordan was in a championship. He's an amazing basketball player, an amazing athlete. And somebody at the 8 o'clock service reminded me that, that Bill Russell uh, won more championships than either of these guys. And I said, who's Bill Russell? These men, they spend hours and hours and hours practicing. Their whole life is devoted to their craft. And of these three men, Michael Jordan has the worst field goal percentage of any of them. He, his field goal percentage is 49%. So he misses more than half the shots that he takes. LeBron's is a little better. When I did the research, I was hoping it would be worse. It's not. He's a little better. He's 50%. Kareem, on the other hand, his field goal percentage is 53%. So these men who have devoted their lives to this sport, who practice hours upon hours upon hours, who work out, who run on purpose... <laughs> They only make a basket just over 50% of the time. The best among them makes it just half the time. In baseball, if a player hits 350, they are an amazing player and they are sought after. 350, if your child comes home with a 35 on his or her test, <laughs> you're not going to put it on the fridge and say, you are heading to the majors. Major remediation. <laughs> That's where they're heading. And so I, I think about my stats. What are my stats as a Christian? What are my stats when I compare them to this reading? And I'll tell you all what, that one trip to the supermarket, and I am liable to the hell of fire. <laughs> Jennifer and I have a word that we use to describe all manner of people that we don't like. That word is turkey. Turkey became part of our, our vocabulary when we had children. And so anybody that does something bad is a turkey. Anybody who annoys us is a turkey. And so on the way to the market the other day, I encountered so many turkeys. <laughs> So many people who can't drive. And I was, I was expressing my anger. And, and both children from the back said, that's a turkey, huh, daddy? Because <laughs> this gospel was in my head. And I'm like, oh, I'm liable to the hell of fire. This is no good. And I, I realized, you know, how often do I practice? How often do I practice what Jesus tells us to practice? And he doesn't make it easy. He does not. So, so to, to think about somebody or doing harm to somebody, that's a bad thing. That's just as bad as doing it. He does not make it easy. And this, I am afraid to say, is not our practice. This is our pep rally. This is where I say to y'all, you are loved and wanted and adored so that you can go into the world and people can say, you are awful. You can't drive. Get out of my way. Because that's what we do when we go into the world, right? 
People are no longer people. People are impediments. People are obstacles. People are in our way. But what Jesus is saying to us is that no one is an obstacle. No one is an impediment. Everyone is beloved. Everyone is a child of God. What Jesus is telling us is that we should never look at one another and say that person is less than. The early saints would go off and live in a cave. Our own St. Francis went off and lived in a cave. And it is easy to be a saint when you're in the desert by yourself. Go be a saint in Costco. I raved about the Costco last week. This week, I'm done with the Costco. <laughs> I thought it was crazy because it was Saturday morning, but I'm pretty sure that Costco's always crazy, that people are always in the way, and the deals are not that great. There goes our Costco endorsement. Edit that out of the Facebook. <laughs> Put in a competitor's name. Go to, go to Costco, go to the supermarket, go to the DMV. Go to the ball game, whatever ball game it is. Sit in traffic and practice. Practice what Jesus calls us to do. That is where we practice. Reading scripture and praying and meditating, those are all wonderful things. It's all by ourselves, by and large, or with like-minded people. The real work, the real difficulty in being a Christian comes in living with other people. Because we're so hard to live with. And so when we're in traffic, when we see the homeless person, a little bit. Don't look at that person as someone scary. Look at that person and realize that they have a favorite ice cream. That they had a favorite Christmas. That they have a favorite book. That odds are incredibly good they were not born homeless. When the person is tailgating you and you are furious, look in the rearview mirror and recognize Maybe that person had a bad day. Maybe they had an argument with their spouse. Or their mom's in the hospital. And they too have a favorite food, a favorite memory. And when we begin to humanize the obstacles in our life, it becomes harder to treat them as objects. When we humanize one, and one another, when we realize that Christ dwells within all of us, that God created all of us, that God has known all of us since before creation, when we look at one another as beloved brothers and sisters, it is hard to hate. It is hard to be humanized. If we want to do what Jesus calls us to do, we have to practice. We have to practice with the same devotion, with the same intensity that men and women who play sports, who play an instrument, who sing, who study, they have to have that same fervor. Imagine everything you do for your vocation or everything you do for your hobby. And then ask, how much do I do for my faith? And when I apply that lens to myself, there's always more that I can do, always more that I can practice. This is our pep rally. This is where we are built up so that we can go into the world and love one another. But the hard work difficult work. 
the most challenging comes in our day-to-day interactions with people we don't know. But look at one another and say to yourself, that is my brother in Christ. That is my sister in Christ. Say it over and over and over. And it begins to sink in. And we begin to believe it. We begin to practice it and to live it, but it takes practice, daily practice. And when we fail, because we will fail, know that Jesus is right there ready to help us up. Know that Jesus is right there ready to say, I am with you. I love you. You are mine. Because he is our redeemer. He is our sustainer. He is our Lord. And we are his children. Amen.